Okay, everyone, today um, I'm going to show you sort of the next level of how you control um, all of those sort of layering things that we were doing with the layer masks. Um, and we're really going to start to directly apply it to an, an actual architectural rendering, right? And so one of the simplest versions of that that I could really ever think of is developing your, your sky context or even background context. So um, I guess one of the things I want to do is get us to start to look at where we're going to place a building in an actual environment, okay? So something like this is um, really kind of like an urban sort of thing. So what I would, well, let's get to the Photoshop background stuff later, but what I what I basically want to do is I want to find a background. So let's look at um, urban city. Um, urban city is kind of redundant, huh? Um, let's do urban human point of view or human perspective. Let's just call it city, I guess. And it gave me nothing that was human perspective. <laughs> All right, maybe something like this. Okay. So, um, I mean, this isn't going to work out perfectly for mine. I might have to mirror my image in order to get it to work because one side is longer than the other. But basically what I want to do is possibly take my building and place it on this site. Right. Um, the, the good thing about it is, you know, like the perspective is kind of close. I'm, I want to focus on the angles and stuff and maybe change a, a few small things like, uh, oh, of course, it's going to go slow on me today. Oh, I know what it is. It's all these other families. Turn those off. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's probably going to be a little bit more appropriate for that one. Something a little bit like that. Okay, so let me save this. Let's go to set view, named views. I'm going to save this as um, overlay perspective. You don't have to do exactly this. I'm just trying to show you the sort of workflow and thought process. So um, overlay perspective is, is the inverse. It's a mirror of what we're going to put on top of this image, okay? And we're going to talk about like, getting it perfect enough to work and all that stuff. It's going to be a little weird. But um, for all intents and purposes, we need to get a rendering that's not going to have any background at all, okay? So um, I think I might have mentioned it to you guys before, but do any of you recall what it was that you need to use in order to do that? It's called an alpha channel. Okay, an alpha channel is essentially a map. It's like a, a, a masking map that you can use to, to eliminate certain elements in your rendering. Now, right now, my rendering is going to turn out pretty simple. It's kind of just like, you know, this outer edge thing. But imagine if you're looking through, like, the Golden Gate Bridge, right? It's all structure and cables and, and trusses and, and all that other stuff. But to have to go through and Photoshop and actually crop out every single one of those things is going to be incredibly laborious. But what an alpha mask allows you to do is just do it all in one shot. So um, the very simple version is um, if you, and this is the part where you might want to follow along with me, um, if you go into the settings, right, the, the key is under the output settings, you can click and drag this. I don't think we've really, we haven't really ventured down into the bottom half of this menu yet. But um, click and drag it up, and you'll get to this section under render channels. Um, the, the render channels, if you check alpha, it's going to turn this on and allow you a selection that says opaque. Um, don't worry about opaque right now unless you have glass that you can see through. Then you might want to, um, well, yeah, don't worry about it. But um, what opaque does is it takes all of the glazing and it makes it still a solid alpha mask. So I might need to show you a couple versions of this, but I'm going to leave opaque off for now, and my building's still going to show up uh, totally uh, alpha masked anyway. So um, with that, we can just go to render, hit render, and um, you can overwrite that if you have that on. 
and um, just give this a minute or two to run. It shouldn't take very long because I turned off all the lights and stuff like that, so it should run pretty quickly. But one of the things you realize at first is that it shows up with a black background where the sky used to be. Okay, so let's let this run for a little bit and then I'll show you the compilation process. All right, looks like uh, most of you are sort of at this level. So um, what I wanna show you here is something that's a little bit more subtle um, of a detail. Um, you can actually hover through the different channels that you have checked on and see what results you're getting from them. So our regular render channel, that's this one right here, is the result of the render as an image composite. But these channels make up what that is. So if you hover over the A on the bottom left corner of your um, preview, it shows you the alpha channel. So when you look at this image, what does it remind you of? Based off of what we learned last week. Positive and negative space. Right, positive and negative space, right? It's basically, this, I mean, it's a, it's a binary black and white uh, image that we can use for our la layer mask in Photoshop. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you real quick just the saving process, so let me stop this. And you want to be very careful that when you save this image, that you save it the right way. Um, I tend to like to work in PNG. Um, it's just a file format that's pretty versatile, um, and it's not too, you know, data heavy. So um, what I'm going to do is, you, if you click on the image save thing, um, I'm going to switch it to 32 bits. But here's the key. you got to click on save all channels. We haven't done this yet. So... Um, what, what you need to know about this checkbox at the end, um, it, you can um, embed channels if the format supports it. So you can have like a TIFF file or a Targa, TGA. Um, they will allow for embedded um, alpha masks and, and you know like other material ID, object ID layers and stuff like that. So think of it as just like a really, really smart image. But to keep things simple, let's just do it as as not embedded so that we can actually physically see the, the things that we're working with and we don't have to go digging for them. So click on um, save all channels, but do not check on embed and hit OK. Oh, sorry. I uh, didn't actually set where it's supposed to go. So 32-bit save all channels and open the folder. I'm going to save mine um, to my dump drive. My dump folder is right here. I'm going to call this one check A, and then you can hit OK. So now um, I'm back in that folder. I'm looking at the files that I'm working with, and I've got a file that's called check A and check A alpha. Okay, so that is basically you saved both of those files at the same time. Does that make sense? So um, let's go into Photoshop. And I'm going to pull in, if you look at the preview down there at the bottom, you can see one of them, whoops. Um, one of these is the alpha, obviously, and one of them is the regular render. So I'm going to pull the regular render into Photoshop. All right, so there's my render. <clears throat> um, I'm going to duplicate that layer so I can mess around with it. Um, if you need to duplicate the layer, just right-click it and um, go to Duplicate. Um, and I'll turn that layer visually off. Just, it's just, I like to keep the original layer there in case I need to modify it. So um, with your uh, background that I just duplicated, okay, this is where you need to utilize your alpha mask. Um, but you need to bring your alpha mask into Photoshop first. So I'm going to drag that in as well. And now you can see that they exactly align, provided you used exactly the same resolution and position on the page. OK? Um, so we can select this whole image, and I'm going to Control-C to copy it. OK? That's very important. So when I go into this image, right, the, the background image or the, the base image, what I need to do is create a layer mask for it. And I didn't show you this before. Um, Last week, I showed you how to find it in the menu, but there's actually a quick button all the way down here in the bottom right corner, right down there. Um, you can't really see it very well from back there, but it, it's a square with a little circle in it. Let me 
pull this up higher on the screen so you can see it. Oh great, my layers menu went away. That button right there, you guys see that? Okay, so um, hang on, let me get this in a position that's going to work well for you so you can see the tools. All right, so anyway, if you have your image selected and you click on that, what it does is it creates a layer mask for you. That's that right there, okay? Um, you are currently drawing on the layer mask when you create it, so you really, you really should just need to say, um, oh, no, it didn't work. Um, sorry, Alt, you have to Alt click it, and what you're going to see is the layer mask itself. Okay, that's a very important distinction, okay? There's, there's seeing the image, and then there's seeing the layer mask. Generally speaking, when you, what we did last week, we had a hidden layer mask. We were modifying it, but we couldn't actually see the mask itself. So now, when you Alt click on it, and then you hit Control V, it's gonna create that mask for you. Okay, so now you can see it in the thumbnail, right? That that top layer, we copied it and we pasted it onto the layer mask. So um, when I go back to the regular image, that's what I get. Pretty cool, right? So, um, I wonder if I can actually get this image. I can't get this image. Let me just try and do a low res one. Um, this image right here. I'm just going to try and rip a low res one real quick. Um, let's do snipping tool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll go through it all with you again. Just just kind of think of it conceptually here for a sec, and I'll, I'll walk you through all the steps again, okay? So I, I just want to cl complete the thought so you don't forget where you are, right? This is kind of an interesting process. So um, let's say you have your image uh, background that you want to use. Well, the cool thing about it here, and this is really the end of the thought, is I can paste that in and quite literally just, um, well, I'm going to have to flip it, so. You can sort of, I mean, you can see that obviously I'm going to have to do some editing and stuff, but you want to work with... A, yeah, well, I mean, we'll edit that out. That's what I was getting at, is that that, that image isn't going to work perfectly. But um, I guess what I'm trying to get at, and this isn't the greatest example of it, is that you can take a background like that and it works out generally pretty well. Let's find a landscape, perhaps. So let's do, um, let's do one with limited hillside. Uh, All right, this one looks pretty cool. The sun's coming from approximately the right side too. So, um, you know, setting and lighting is really important. So notice how, notice how the, the sun is kind of coming in on the right-hand side and the fact that the sun, you know, kind of illuminating the back of the clouds over there is jarring, right? So it's obviously not the right image to use. So rather than that one, I think I'll try this one. Um, this could work out a little better for me. Something like that seems a little more appropriate, right? It's getting there. And instead of water, it's just lava. The water. Well, yeah, the lava <laughs> thing. All right, well, here. I mean, the cool thing about this mask is I can fix that, too, if I wanted to. So let's grab something like this. Copy that. This is going to look really kind of weird perspective, but there you go. <laughs> I know, it doesn't look real, but, <laughs> but you know, sometimes that, that sort of uh, decoupage look is what you're going for, and this is a really easy way to do that. So, do you guys know what a decoupage is? No. Yeah, I don't know how to spell it, so bear with me a second, but I think it's like decoupage. There, no, that's not it. There it is, decoupage. It's like a... You know, it's like when you take a bunch of things and sort of blend them together or something like that, you know. Decoupage. Yeah. Anyway. So, anyway, that's, that's. I mean, you can see, like, uh, 
like all of these like dystopian sort of renderings, they're kind of like decoupages, right? Like you could use you could use layering masks in order to map in certain types of materials in certain areas and like you see a lot of that down here. So anyway, that's all I'm getting at is that you can use it for that sort of stuff. So what questions do you have before um, before I sort of pause for a moment and then go back and tell you everything again. Kind of cool, right? All right, let me uh, reiterate everything and then you'll really get it. <laughs> 